Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Chats with Chaudhry. I hope you're safe and well. It's a glorious sunny day here in Surrey. The sun is shining down on me, but it's going to be even brighter now because I'm delighted to be joined by two fantastic people. I'm joined by Dr. Bjorn Maters, who is a member of the executive board and project lead for Achima Pulse, and Andreas Kunart, who is head of business development and sales. And they're both from the Hima exhibitions, I'm trying to get these pronunciations right, so forgive me, uh, who, are in, who are in charge of the Achima events. So gentlemen, it's lovely to see you both. How are you? Hey, Rusban. I'm fine. I hope uh, you're fine as well. I mean, um, summer is coming in Germany too, so it's, uh, it's a really good day. Good. Yeah. Uh, well, well, and I've got to say, you're both looking very, very slick this morning, so I'm glad to see that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we start talking about Achima and Achima Pulse in particular, perhaps you could give people just a little bit of background uh, of your own backgrounds, if you don't mind, uh, so they've got a better understanding of what your roles are. Yeah. Would you like to start? Do you want me to like start? Yeah, I can start. Um, uh, I'm a, a chemist by training, uh, to be precise, a polymer chemist. Uh, so um, all the dis discussions right now going on about uh, recycling and uh, plastics uh, in, in a maritime environment and so on um, are really interesting for me. Um, but uh, yeah, what, what did I afterwards, after my training, um, I uh, started uh, to work uh, with uh, Dechema in uh, 2010 as a project manager. And uh, that's the organization where I lost my heart to. Yeah? I, I still work for Dechema. I, I worked in, in several uh, positions, uh, left the scientific project management, uh, went uh, to event organization and uh, yeah then it's more than two years i'm a member of the executive board of dehima exhibitions and i'm uh, quite happy to to work with uh, loads of customers from all around the world uh, in in presenting a platform uh, such achima fantastic and andreas a little bit about yourself if you don't mind well, actually, I'm a business guy, but I've been working in the field of chemistry for quite a while uh, from a strategy marketing angle. I've been an uh, exhibitor at Akema for quite a few years uh, and a couple of stations. It indeed lost some of my heart as well to Akema. And I'm, I really joined uh, the, the event platform because I think process industry and process technology has a bright future ahead uh, with all these discussions coming with circularity, digitization. Process industry can be quite a game changer, and I'm happy to work on that. Fantastic. So I know uh, Akima was planned to run last year and I went in 2018. Obviously, the pandemic had an impact on it. So before we start talking about what's going on now and what you've done, perhaps someone could give a quick overview of those who are not familiar with Akima, a little bit about the history. So Bjorn, would you like to just talk a little bit about the history of Akima? Uh, yes, uh, last year uh, we celebrated our 100th uh, anniversary. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Achema was uh, first uh, held in 1920 in uh, Hanover. And uh, it, it was um, a very small exhibition with some exhibitors. Uh, we had almost uh, 600 uh, square meter. So, a, a very, very small show. Um, but it was uh, an idea of uh, a very, uh, yeah, let me say, intelligent guy uh, who said, we need to bring the engineers and the chemists together and uh, we need to uh, discuss uh, on a specific uh, topics like or, or um, exhibits like a pump or some other things and really to, to bring uh, the chemist who is mostly working in the laboratory together with the engineer who has to do the scale up uh, and uh, everything and uh, let's uh, discuss it there and uh, yeah then it uh, it moved uh, first uh, it was every year then they moved to a two-year rhythm and uh, since um, uh, the restart after World War II, uh, we are in a three-year rhythm uh, based in Frankfurt on the Frankfurt Fairgrounds. Uh, we are uh, the oldest uh, trade show on the Frankfurt Fairgrounds, organized not by the Frankfurt Fairgrounds because Dejima is a, a, a different company. And um, we, we increased our international uh, share from show to show. And uh, 
Yeah, uh, now we are uh, a trade show uh, attracting uh, more than uh, 3,800 exhibitors from uh, 55 nations. And uh, in the last decade, uh, we had always around 150,000 attendees from uh, over 150 uh, countries worldwide. So um, Achema really developed uh, to a trade show which uh, delivers all the solutions uh, from the laboratory stuff um, up to everything like mixing, separation, technologies. Um, uh, the, uh, the companies uh, are, are showing here their technology, how they build a new steam cracker, or everything you need for the chemical and pharmaceutical uh, industry to produce. But we have it up to the end when it comes to packaging, storage, and uh, logistics. And uh, th that's really a, a USP of uh, Achema. And uh, we, we really uh, developed in this uh, 100 years. And um, Andreas and I, we are lucky that we can uh, shape the start of the next century of Achema. That's fantastic. Andreas, do you have anything to add to that? Well, just, just maybe highlighting how revolutionary we thought was back 100 years ago and how current it still is being cross-industry and, and using the potential of collaborating cross-industry uh, is as relevant as, as ever. You have new players coming in using chemistry to produce energy. You have uh, textile companies thinking about recycling and using process technology. Uh, you have IT companies all of a sudden playing a major role in, in value creation in the, in the pharmaceutical business and also the chemistry business. So cross-industry by heart is still ongoing and actually what, what leads to success in the future. That's where we want to lead Akema to. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I have to say, uh, I am fortunate enough or have been fortunate over the last few years to visit lots of large exhibitions, both in Europe and North America around pharma. And I have to say, visiting Akema in 2018, I'm sure it's 2018, I went, it, it was such a large, event. it was by far the biggest show I had the pleasure of attending over the five days and I truly, my feet really did suffer visiting <laughs> the show, visiting all the halls and all the people. But I, that was when I started wearing trainers at exhibitions because my shoes couldn't take it any longer. When I was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so so and it, it was a great show. Um, so obviously um, you were planning to do Akima last year, but the pandemic impacted that. So can you give me a bit of background then in terms of how Akima Pulse has come to fruition. A bit of background on that, and what were your thinking behind creating Akima Pulse? Uh, so um, we, we we do have a world leading platform with Akima, and uh, with this comes a large responsibility to take care of your business, your brand, and your exhibitors and your your visitors. So we moved um, very early on a decision and voted very early on a decision to postpone and, and move it to to April twenty two, which. Uh, with hindsight was very smart to do. And we did so in November, 2021, when there was still some reasonable hope that it might work out some way, but still looking into invest what people have to make to come to Akema, set up a big show for everybody. It was very wise and smart to do so. Can I ask you a quick question before that? Because I spoke sure. to a lot of exhibitors, uh, not exhibitors, organizers, and they delayed making that decision in terms of moving their events to virtual. You obviously have taken a, you took a brave decision and moved it straight into 2022. So um, what made you come to that decision so early? I mean, I mean, I mean, it's great that you did it, but it's very different to a lot of organizers as I've spoken to who delayed it and delayed it and delayed it till the very last minute. And it was literally three months or six months before they did it. So what, what made you come to that so quickly? Well, as a trade show organizer, you really have to bring in together visitors. They can cancel their trips at short notice. That's, you know, they haven't probably haven't even booked yet their travels, but you also have the exhibitor side. And we're a very close exchange with our exhibiting partners. We have an exhibitor board and we popped the question very early. If they believe, A, we can do it. And we said, well, yeah, probably you can. But B, do we think anybody will show up? And we, we seen travel restrictions in place that made sure that it was very easy to understand that people will not be coming to a B2B event, especially in a system relevant industry like the process industry. Sure. Um, so it was a unanimous vote uh, from our exhibitors, um, which surprised us in its definite level of being very certain that this is a good idea. But um, we've, been very, we've been working very hard to make it happen in June. Uh, we're working very hard to make it happen in April. And I think. Uh, Sky is looking brighter. 
Good. Okay. Sorry, I stopped you talking about Akima Paul. So please go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, so having having said this, uh, of course, if you have the world leading forum for the process industry, you need to think about digital. You need to think about hybrid, regardless of COVID. So we, we did have some plans in in the drawer. Uh, on how to proceed with digital and hybrid uh, add-ons to Akema and also spin-offs. Having a three-year cycle as a brand um, also um, sets a frame that leaves some space to fill for, for your brand as well. And um, having the COVID situation, having the situation of having moved to April 2022, uh, we took a deep look in our eyes and said, well, we can pull this off. We got seven months to go. Uh, we've, we've moved our plans ahead, created Akema Pulse, uh, basically from scratch and uh, the first rough ideas and, and put it into practice. And, and here we are now about to have a huge show with 900 exhibitors and hopefully many visitors. Uh, Bjorn, do you want to add anything to, to what Andres has just said? No, he's, uh, I mean, he, he's completely right, but um, it, it, it didn't came really out of the blue. Uh, I mean, we, we started the uh, internal strategy process in uh, 2019, uh, where we discussed about uh, the future of Achema in the next decade, so 2020 to 2030. And uh, we saw, okay, um, there are, are still uh, people around there who either can't afford to travel to Frankfurt, or uh, they are just... Um, can't spend the time. I mean, if you're flying overseas to visit a trade show and uh, our attendees uh, in average uh, are staying 1.9 days uh, at Achema and then you, you fly in one day, you, you stay almost two days and fly out the other day. So it's, uh, it's uh, four days, uh, mostly a complete week uh, over uh, just for traveling and um, uh, um, attending the trade show. Uh, okay, you, you, you get a a lot back from uh, your attendance, uh, but uh, some people um, uh, can't just uh, spend uh, four days uh, for a trade show. And we, we saw in the strategy process, okay, um, we, we need a digital tool um, that our exhibitors uh, can at least present on a digital way uh, their new innovations and products. And uh, this were the, the first thoughts. When, when Corona uh, came up uh, now uh, almost uh, 14 months ago, uh, we saw, okay, uh, we were planning for 2024 to deliver some uh, uh, digital add-ons. Uh, we, we need it uh, much quicker. So we started uh, already planning for a hybrid Achama 2021. And uh, then uh, when we had the discussions in, in autumn, uh, we, uh, we switched. And um, we, what we, we did, and Andreas already uh, told it, we, we, we didn't say, okay, we have a hybrid uh, event in, in planning and we just do it 100% virtual. No, we, we said we have a digital backbone for, for the hybrid event and we take this for the virtual event, but we are planning the virtual event from scratch because uh, digital events have to be planned completely different to in-person events. Sure, that's true. Well, that leads in quite nicely to my next question, actually, which is... <laughs> What makes a Kima Pulse different to other virtual exhibitions and conferences? And also, from your point of view, having, you know, again, I know a lot of the event organizers that I have worked with and spoken to over the last 18 months, they may have been planning digital at some point, but a lot of them weren't. They've had to sort of pivot quite quickly and they've had their own challenges. So what challenges have there been for you to create this digital platform and what makes it different to what's already out there with a lot of other events? Of course, uh, there are uh, challenges uh, around if you introduce a new digital platform, uh, if you, um, you onboard your complete community um, uh, on, a, on a new platform they are not used to. Um, that, that's of course, but uh, if you introduce uh, new uh, tools at the in-person uh, trade show, you, you have to explain uh, them as well, though. That's uh, nothing new for us. Um, le let me answer it in a, in a little different way. We, um, we really want to deliver an, an Achama Pulse, a, a digital um, event, which uh, offers um, the the same key factors li like we offer it at Achema. So showing the full spectrum of process industry and life science industries. 
uh, really uh, to, to have a, a broad uh, spectrum of exhibitors uh, delivering from laboratory sector, mechanical thermal processes, pharma machinery equipment, uh, all the, the instrumentation and automation uh, guys, pumps, valve compressors, and so on. And um, uh, th that uh, we really do uh, with uh, almost 900 exhibitors uh, we have. And um, of course, um, digital is a little bit different because if you're uh, attending the trade show in person, you're spending the complete day on uh, the fairgrounds and maybe you need new shoes afterwards, um, <laughs> but you, you made a lot of connections and you, you have this type of serendipity and uh, that's, that's amazing, yeah? And with, with all your, your senses, uh, you, you really um, en enjoy uh, the trade show uh, attendance. But um, if you uh, attend as a visitor a, a digital trade show, you might consume some parts of this digital event after work. If you're just uh, on your sofa, or uh, maybe you're, you're getting rid of uh, reading some uh, online news or something like this, and you have a look, oh, are there new products? Are there exhibitors? Oh, I got some new matches in the matchmaking. Some people registered there, and uh, I, I don't know them yet. Uh, I try to get uh, in contact with them. And uh, that's why we, we spread uh, the time from uh, a five-day trade show as Achimer uh, is it as an in-person event to a complete month. So the, the online expo is taking place for a complete month. All the exhibitors and visitors have the chance to interact uh, for a whole month. And in the, in the mid of this month, at the 15th and 16th of June, uh, we have our uh, so-called live days um, where loads of content like exhibitor talks, workshops, the Congress is taking place, and even the three live stages we build up here in Frankfurt on the fairgrounds uh, where we invited a lot of C-level executives and uh, some um, high-level researchers uh, to discuss about uh, the ongoing uh, topics and trends in the process industry. And that's, that's a very different approach. And of course, after the live stays, all the content is available on demand. So uh, you, you can uh, have a look in it uh, if you want again on the sofa, yeah. Cool, and Andreas, I'm sure you've got something to add to this. Well, just to emphasize, I mean, we, we call this one plus two equals infinity because we really believe this, this concept is a, is a unique driver of value because you can only maintain focus for so long. And we've put together two very intense live days with more than 200 hours of streaming from our exhibitors plus our central program and the live stages and the Congress programs. 200 workshops, it's just so much interaction, but you still want time to, to browse around the exhibition, have conversations with your peer, grow your network, etc. So we've detached that basically, having given you two weeks to prepare for the live days and, and getting to know everybody who's on the platform uh, and then two weeks to follow up. Um, so that gives you, a, that adds to your experience because that integrates best into your life and your work and your busy schedule and having kids at home and the summer's coming up in June. So we know how it is. We're, I mean, uh, we're, everybody knows how, how COVID conditions are. When you have a summer looming, everybody's vaccinated. You wanna be mobile. You wanna have a quick conference call on the go. Uh, so so the, the app is gonna be a cool feature we think is gonna be used. Um, the platform in general integrates very well into busy lives. Um, it's very performant with streaming as well. It gets sets a very low bar for getting into contact with everybody on the platform. So networking is going to be a large driver. And we do have really great content. I cannot emphasize this enough. We got eight premium partners and 900 exhibitors. We're really pulling together a great program. The world has not yet seen uh, in the process industry. So one, well, it does sound very, very exciting. And I have to say, I went to the press day and I was very impressed with some of the talks that you had there. So that was very, very good. So, but one of the criticisms I get from a lot of people, uh, particularly exhibitors who go to virtual events, is that, yeah, there's lots of great content. There's lots of great talks. That's fantastic. But I find it very difficult to engage with people at these events. You know, everyone, you know, what they miss most about live events is obviously the interaction, physically seeing people face to face, having that. And obviously a lot of the criticisms that virtual events have had, and not every single event, but a lot of them have, is that uh, while 
organizers will promise you know networking and matchmaking it is actually not very easy so what's unique about your platform or how easy it is for people to be engaging with others on your platform uh, Andreas, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, and uh, well, you, you basically, Rizwan, you're striking a very uh, sensitive point because it, it's not a matter of technology. It's about attitude and culture. Right. And um, what we're trying to enable is a culture of openness and, and uh, being approachable. And we're trying to support this with the platform that we offer um, by giving everybody the tool they need to, to reach out to somebody and be open for contacts to new people. I mean, everybody has the experience of if you just talk five minutes with somebody, you either find some common ground or appreciate that you didn't and, and, and move the other way, but still had a great conversation. So um, our goal was to provide a platform that offers a really low threshold of getting engaged. You can, you can chat with anybody, you can schedule one-on-one -on -one video calls, and um, you can have pre-scheduled interviews, you can sit in the sessions, you can participate in votings, you can ask chat questions, it's very interactive. In the end, it's up to you as a visitor and attendee to, to really go out there, um, muster up some courage and approach new people that you don't know yet. And just ask them, hey, let's have a quick conversation, have a cup of coffee maybe uh, in a virtual sense and, and see, see where we're at and if we find some common ground to move ahead on. Um, that's basically what happens at trade shows and uh, to translate that into digital needs support but also is something that we will promote uh, in our campaigns. Whenever you hear us talking about Akema Pulse, we do highlight that it's very interactive and only great things can happen if you mix, we've talked about cross industry, something new together to create something new. Fantastic. Uh, Bjorn? Yes. Uh, yeah, um, as, uh, as Andreas said, it's a, a lot of work to educate because digital is working different and uh, we are doing our very best um, uh, to to show our clients uh, the the best possibilities or how how to make the most out of a, a digital event like Achma Pulse and um, what's uh, what, what we have done together with the, the technology provider of uh, the platform that um, it's it's not that you have to um, be in front of your screen 24-7 for, for a complete month, yeah? Th th this would be hilarious. Um, so if, if someone wants to, um, uh, wants to uh, get in contact with you, uh, or writes you a message, uh, some, it, it directly uh, drops into your personal uh, email inbox. And you can uh, even answer it uh, out of your inbox. So uh, you, you can directly get in touch. Um, you have to function um, as uh, you might uh, know it from, um, from some personal messengers um, that you can directly uh, get in touch with the other one via a direct video call. You, you see who is available, who is available now at uh, the, the exhibitor booth and uh, the, okay, uh, there's someone available. He's in charge of uh, the region uh, I'm, I'm a resident of. And okay, I, I give him a video call and there's no need to leave the platform. But uh, as Andreas said, uh, we, have, we have the app. So uh, uh, Achma Pulse uh, is a kind of uh, a social web for process industry for a complete month. And you have this social web on your mobile phone and uh, therefore in your pocket. So uh, that's, uh, that's a complete different approach to just say, okay, you, you can uh, use it on your laptop or desktop uh, PC. And uh, if you're not logged in, uh, you're not at the event. So uh, the, the event is something which uh, goes parallel to your own work. Just, just to make sure to, to emphasize one point though, however, if you wanna be open, you also need a safe space. And we're also providing that safe space for visitors. Uh, I mean, I've been to digital events and uh, I've looked at a couple of companies and after that I've signed up to a couple of newsletters apparently because uh, just <laughs> visiting a profile page uh, made up for a new lead contact on behalf of the company. Um, that's not really the idea of having a digital event and that's not happening at Akema Pulse. So feel free to move around. You will notice uh, whenever there's a consent that you are consenting to exchanging information, just visiting a company profile, having a look at a stream, um, will uh, will make you approachable, but um, you're always somewhat in charge of your data. We do provide a safe space 
where you don't need to be in touch with everybody. Well, no, that's really good. And I actually, I think the point about um, having messages come into your inbox and being able to communicate outside of the platform is very, very important because the number of events I've gone to and they don't offer that. And then you suddenly go back into the platform. And you realize you missed a meeting invite because you never had a chance to go back in and you've missed the actual appointment yeah. that someone had asked you for because it never came into your inbox and you didn't know. Um, and I think also, you know, having worked on exhibitions for many years myself, I know that you have to spend time educating the exhibitors, even at live events, on how to man their stands and work with visitors. You know, it's the other way around as well to say, look, you know, you need to engage with people who walk past your booth. You know, the classic one is everybody talking to themselves within a booth and having their backs to the, to the aisles and the people are afraid to go in the booth because they don't want to interrupt the personal conversation that's one of my bugbears at live shows but you know it's uh, you know so it's having in, it, training companies to be proactive on their platforms as well to engage with visitors as well as educating visitors as you said it's up to them as well to be confident enough. but it, but i think as organizers it's also important to make a platform easy enough for them to understand to mm -hmm. know that they can do it and now that's very very important i'm great to see that you guys are doing that so m looking ahead what are some of the highlights that people can expect to see at Akima Pulse. Yeah, um, uh, Andreas already uh, talked a lot about uh, highlights, uh, the 200 workshops and uh, the uh, loads of hours of streaming from the exhibitors. And uh, I think the, the, the 900 exhibitors uh, bring a lot of innovations and uh, product novelties to the uh, to the stage and uh, show this. Uh, I mean, the, the last Ahama was 2018 and um, the, the complete industry uh, has, uh, achieved so much in the last three years and even in the last year in uh, in times of uh, COVID-19 uh, we, we had so many innovations and uh, the industry had uh, to deliver and uh, uh, had uh, had to tackle uh, so many uh, hurdles and, and challenges around there um, that uh, we, we will have a real broad spectrum but what uh, what, what's really a a highlight, or, or let me say in different words, uh, the, the two live days are really fireworks uh, around there. Be, because uh, there we, we have, um, besides the, the content from the exhibitors, um, a high class uh, Congress, uh, which really shows uh, new innovations uh, coming out of research and uh, development and so uh, our our congress is uh, is not only like basic research trl 1 or 2 it's it's really trl 7 to 9 and um the most of uh, the work uh, we present now in the in the congress you might see in a final product at ahma 2024 and of course uh, we have the the live stages uh, here in frankfurt where we welcome uh, loads of uh, c level executives uh, for for interviewing of fireside chats, uh, we have live demos uh, like where we build up the laboratory of the future. Uh, we we have uh, live cases uh, from the the five G sectors. Yeah, we we build up our own five G network uh, just for Arama Pulse uh, to show how you can really uh, use five G in the process industry to to run your uh, chemical site. And uh, of course, we, we discuss uh, uh, the topics around uh, the fast track to work sign. Um, that's a, a huge challenge for the industry. Um, I mean, it, you know, if you're uh, selling uh, machinery and equipment uh, to the pharmaceutical industry, it uh, takes you 12 or 18 months to, to build the machinery. And uh, now your customer wants to have it in, uh, in a ha half a year. Uh, and uh, this might change the, uh, the the complete culture in in the industry and uh, all the the processes uh, for for upscaling and setting up uh, production plans uh, might changing after COVID. And uh, our community uh, said, okay, Achima and Achima Pulse is the perfect place to discuss, like the owner operator and uh, solution provider and researchers coming together. How can we make it better uh, in uh, in the future? What are our learnings? Uh, uh, what uh, what dreams have come true? Uh, which one haven't? And uh, of course, we we will discuss a, a lot of um, um, a lot of questions around the field of uh, modularization 
and uh, the hydrogen economy, uh, which is just at uh, the starting point uh, of, of being really a revolution. And uh, yeah, that's for me some of the highlights. Uh, I, I could even uh, tell another hour about uh, about other things, but um, but for me uh, uh, that are some of the highlights. Yeah. All right, and, and Andreas, just sort of sort of finalizing the bit about Kima Pulse. I mean, what else can exhibitors expect to see if they register for the event? Well, uh, adding to what Bjorn said, uh, the fireworks, I'm not going to add more fireworks because there's plenty around. What I, what I am trying to add is the idea that this means that everybody can design his very own trade show experience because uh, we allow very good filters, options, and everybody is, is there for a different reason. And you can narrow down from 200 hours of content from the exhibitor, 200 workshops, you can focus on those issues really relevant to you. And, and make that happen for you. So uh, giving you the focus and giving you the experience, that's that's one thing to expect. Second, there's new innovative focus uh, formats like open spaces where you can actually raise your hand, say your name, bring up an issue and discuss it with 10 other people who are like-minded and uh, see, see how you get that hour with new ideas and leave, uh, leave with some progress in your projects and some new ideas and some insights. And the third thing I wanna add to expect is this is not an e-special we're putting together because we, unfortunately we had to move the, the Akema main event. This is a new digital flagship event and it's here to stay. It is meant and designed as a stepping stone in between the live events. So if we make this work and make this happen, the community will get this stepping stone in between the live events next time coming up in 2023. Because so, three years, yes, for hardware, it's a long innovation cycle, but we all know the world is moving fast and we need to touch base occasionally and, and come together. And this is our new tool. So let's use it. Fantastic. So you mentioned uh, Achima as in the live event. So let's finish off by looking ahead to uh, the next year's event and what people can expect. And how's your planning going for that? Our planning for Achima 2022 uh, are very, very good at the moment. So, um, uh, due to the, the increasing vaccination campaign, uh, we, we really see that um, postponing the event from uh, June 21 to April 22 uh, was uh, a very good uh, decision. And um, what, what we see right now that we have on a daily basis uh, new uh, exhibitors uh, uh, registering for the event. and. Um, that everyone really believed that uh, the trade show industry uh, is having a, a very good uh, restart or bounce back uh, in, in 2022. And especially for our industry, yeah? capital intensive industrial goods, where, in, you, you know, in, in the chemical and pharma industry, it's, it's not that we are uh, buying a product out of a catalog and uh, that we have an innovation cycle of six months. Yeah, uh, investing uh, into a good machinery uh, means investing for uh, the next two, three, or even four decades. And uh, you really want uh, to see the technology you buy. Uh, you, you really want to have this multi-sensory experience. Yeah, it, it, it sounds, sounds a little bit special when I say you, you really want to touch the pump and, and you, you, you want to hear how it works. But at, at the end, uh, it, it is like it is, of course, of course. and 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 this uh, multisensory experience is uh, Achma 22 uh, providing, as uh, all the Achmas uh, in in the last uh, decades or in the last century, and um, of course uh, Achma 2022 uh, will be a hybrid event. There, there, there will be a digital backbone underneath um, that if uh, someone is, is still not allowed uh, to travel or to enter Germany. Uh, that he can um, uh, get in contact uh, with all the exhibitors uh, in a digital way, but uh, the, the physical uh, days, the five days in April from uh, 4th to, to 8th of April are still outstanding, yeah. Fantastic. And Andreas, any final words to add? Well, to final, final words. Achima is going to be back. It's going to come <laughs> back strong. It's going to be more digital than ever. And it's gonna include some new features that are gonna be very cool and focus on really getting the cross industry aspect of it, uh, surrounding sustainability and digitization and startups. Um, get that right and add that feature onto the platform because we need to talk about digitization. We need to talk about circularity 
and we need to talk about innovation from startups coming into Akema and the process industry. And that's what we're going to be doing in 2022. On top of all the other stuff we're going to be doing in 2022 to bounce back strong. Fantastic. Well, look, on those words, it's a great way to finish. If people would like to know more about Akima Pulse and Akima, the links will be above the video. So I'm not going to ask you guys to read out the website address. It's fine. I'll put the link above it. Unless you want to say it now as a plug, that's fine. Uh, but I will put it above the video so people can click on it to find out more about the event and also obviously register for the tickets themselves. So, gentlemen, I it was genuinely a joy to talk to you this morning. I, I, I love talking. You can tell... I love exhibitions as well, having worked in exhibitions. So you can see see that when we talk. So I really wish you lots and lots of success, both with Akima Pulse and obviously with the live event next year as well. So thank you very much for talking to me. Hopefully we can catch up about after Akima Pulse and discuss what some of the highlights were and how it worked for you guys as well. So that'd be great. So until then, happy planning. No, I, luckily, I don't have to worry about that. I'll leave you guys to worry about that. So happy planning. Good luck with the event and I'll catch up with you soon. Um, and if you want to know more about Akima Pulse or register, as I said, the details are above the video. So click on the link, find out more about the event. And also, if you've got any questions for Bjorn or Andres, they're on LinkedIn. You can send them messages directly. You can leave comments below. You know, if there's any sort of features or topics that you'd love to see co covered, if not at this event but maybe Akima next year I'm sure they'd love to have your ideas they're always looking for what people would like to know put some comments below the video as well and until next time as always thank you stay well and stay safe bye 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 thank you